Studies show this. On average, men fall in love faster than women, but why? Well, after hours of research, I found out there are two reasons why this happens, and one solution that can solve them both. And all of these can be connected to the life story of Vincent Van Gogh. He used to live with his family in the Netherlands, but his life changed when he became obsessed with his cousin, Key Vostriker. Even though they were barely speaking, Van Gogh eventually proposed to her, but she brutally rejected him by saying, No, never, never. Refusing to accept it, he even stuck his hand into a candle flame, saying he would only remove it if she said yes. Her answer was still no. What Van Gogh experienced is called limerence, and we all tend to suffer from this. This term was invented by psychologist Dorothy Tenov in 1979. Basically, it's a one-sided obsessive state that our brain confuses with love. But how do we end up in this state? It all starts in the early stages of the interactions. You meet the girl, start to daydream about her, and flood your brain with dopamine. Since it feels good, your brain wants to do it over and over again. But when your dopamine levels rise, your serotonin levels drop. Why is this important? Well, serotonin is a mood stabilizer hormone, which regulates your emotions and rational thinking. Studies show that people who experience limerence have lower than normal serotonin levels, much like those who suffer from OCD. So you lose a big part of your logical power along the way. And it gets even worse. During those daydreaming moments, you also release oxytocin, the emotional bonding hormone. So you become emotionally attached to her, even though she may barely know that you exist. These three hormones create a rabbit hole, which according to Dorothy Tenoff, can end up in three different ways. Reciprocation. You find out that she likes you back. But let's be real boys, this is rarely the case. Transference. You become obsessed with another person. And starvation. You reset your dopamine and serotonin levels by letting her go. But how can you do that? In the book Atomic Habits, there are revealed five steps for this. Step 1. Decrease the triggers. Don't look at her social media profile, don't listen to romantic songs, and don't watch romantic movies. Number 2. Replace the habit. When you catch yourself thinking about her, block your mind. You can do that by actively trying to catch your next thought. Step 3. Change your environment. You are more prone to fall into limerence when you are alone, so try to spend more time with other people. Step 4. Reward yourself. Do something you like anytime you succeed to control your thoughts. And step five, shift your identity. Try to see yourself from the third person for a moment. Ask yourself, that's what I want to be? The guy who fantasizes about girls? Remember, love and limerence can't usually coexist. But as I said at the beginning of this video, limerence is only one of the two reasons why you fall in love so easily. Unfortunately, Van Gogh had the second one too. After the rejection from his cousin, he was completely heartbroken. But one year later, he fell in love again. Sign Hornick, a sex worker. She was poor, pregnant, and had a young daughter. But Van Gogh didn't care, so he offered her money and shelter, and he even tried to marry her. But his love was too intense. The constant drama combined with the rejection from his family destroyed her emotionally. So later on, she chose to drown herself in a river. But how did he end up falling for her? The halo effect. Basically, one positive trait can make you ignore all the flaws a person might have. In Van Gogh's case, the story was pretty simple. Since Sign's life was down bad, she was really grateful for having him in her life. That positive trait made him overlook all the negative ones. Now, as a species, we are very likely to suffer from the halo effect. Why? Back in the caveman days, finding a mate meant survival of the species. So your brain couldn't let you mess things up by getting random mix. Therefore, it made you see many girls as perfect. But how can you actually stop this phenomenon? Well, at first, I had no idea. Then I stumbled upon Ralph Waldo Emerson, an American philosopher. He believed in the power of deep self-reflection and journaling as a way to achieve your goals. So this is what you have to do. Journal about the qualities that you would love to see in a future girlfriend, and then brutally analyze how many of these qualities she doesn't have. This way, the perfection she seems to have will eventually fade away. Now, both limerence and the halo effect actually have a common psychological cause low self-esteem. Studies show that people with low self-esteem are more likely to interpret small acts of kindness as proof of deep love. This leads them to fall for someone quicker than normal. 
But why? Because our brain becomes desperate. Woo! Yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for! The poet Stendhal called this phenomenon vain love. A love that originates purely from the desire to feel accepted and appreciated. So, if low self-esteem is the root of the problem, the question is, how can you increase it? Well, you can either work on the problem internally, practice self-love, stop comparing yourself to others, set realistic goals, and all that bullshit you've probably heard a thousand times. Or resolve the problem externally. Here you can do what Van Gogh did, get good at something, and find someone to believe in you. Why? Because in this scenario, you will get enough external validation to stop your brain from chasing every woman that comes along your path. For Van Gogh, that person was Joe Bonguer, his brother's wife. During all of his life, Van Gogh only managed to sell one of his paintings. But after he died, Joe Bonguer preserved and promoted his work, ensuring that the world recognized his genius. And as you know, Van Gogh ended up being one of the most appreciated artists of all time. Unfortunately for him, he only got the validation he needed after his death. Thing is, he was actually a very talented artist who put all of his energy and emotions into his work. So you have to do the same. If you don't have any special skills, you could just try to become more interesting as a person. It might seem like a hard mission, but you are only three steps away from achieving it. And I know the perfect video that explains all of them. 